October 11 of 2006, a Bioware employee named Jennifer Hepler said she doesn't like to play video games and would rather skip the gameplay and go straight to the dialogue. Forum goers took this as an opportunity for satire. October 11 of 2007, EA announced its purchase of Bioware. January 10 of 2011, a promotional developer diary for Dragon Age 2 was released on multiple websites. And we were able to take them in some pretty wildly different directions from virginal girl next door to crazy up against the wall, let's have it on right here. March 8 of 2011, Dragon Age 2 hit American shelves and received overall highly positive professional reviews. December 13 of 2011, The Old Republic was released. February 14 of 2012, a post appeared on Reddit with this image attached. On the 18th, Jennifer Hepler, the depicted Bioware employee, posted a series of tweets in reaction to the criticisms leveled in the Reddit post. Soon after, on the 20th, gaming news outlets including Destructoid and Kotaku ran articles documenting the recent conflict, though long since 2006 there had been an undercurrent of debate and ridicule. March 6 of 2012, Mass Effect 3 comes out. Why would it take six years for Jennifer and the gaming media to notice criticisms that had been there all along? It's not unusual for news blogs to comment on public debate, and while the largest discussion of Bioware's failings took place on fast-moving image boards, it often dominated other forums, including Bioware's own forums. The easy thing to say is that media is slow on the uptake. Gaming journalists have more profitable things to do than browse anonymous discussions. But after a laggy and problematic launch for the Old Republic, and ramping up to the highly hyped Mass Effect 3, perhaps a series of articles characterizing Bioware's detractors as raving misogynists is just the sort of story that Bioware and the gaming media would like. Let's get this out of the way. Bioware does not comprehend damage control. Their method is one of censorship and turning a blind eye. That's why employee Stanley was able to delete any posts from the Bioware forum which seemed to hold a dissenting opinion, why parody videos are being taken down from YouTube, and why Jennifer Hepler's Twitter account no longer exists. Their policy prefers to delay reconciliation indefinitely and insult unhappy customers. Their employees don't understand their powerful position, so they react to insults with indignation instead of ignoring them, and then group real criticisms along with the insults so that they can feel righteous while doing whatever it is they were going to do all along. By the account of some longtime fans, Bioware's work has been slowly degrading ever since it was purchased by EA Games, but the official story is that sales are high, the Old Republic is a smashing success, and new frontiers of video game narrative are being explored. Good guy character who's going to sacrifice himself to do the right thing for others, and the much more aggressive, I'm going to, you know, do whatever it takes kind of- Sure, demons are very helpful. Right up until they take your mind and turn you into a monster. Jennifer Hepler is a small part of a big issue, more of a symbol of what is wrong, and by focusing on the minor issue of who she is and calling it a controversy, the media are able to ignore the larger problems and use the opportunity for a few more articles in the pre-launch buzz of Mass Effect 3. This still could have been an opportunity for insight if level-headedness had been maintained, but instead, the articles themselves were written like posts in the flame wars that they think they're above. No article has examined the motives of the Hepler haters, instead happy to work within the context already laid out on Twitter. Sexism, homophobia, and skippable combat. Sexism. She has a vagina. She said it herself. If she says that people are mad that they don't have her vagina, then people must be mad about her vagina. Therefore, they are sexists. And they're men. In the 2006 interview, Jennifer says that in order to appeal to women, games should have a fast-forward button. She also repeatedly expresses contempt for Tolkien and other old white guys. Maybe sexism is a theme here, but the media decided to focus on misogynist insults and jokes, both of which are things that no mature person should get offended by. As John Walker on Rock Paper Shotgun put quite well, the idea of skippable combat is nearly a non-issue. He reasons that any game made with avoidable combat in mind will not suffer from the same imbalances that a game might if combat were simply taken out. 
Games like this have already been made. Games with nonlinear progression, games with stealth, games with dialogue trees for worming your way out of fights, and even games where you're running away from the action. The real concern is that Hepler's suggestion would lead to game design where no story could be present in the gameplay, and no gameplay could be present in the story. This concern seems validated if you play through the Mass Effect 3 demo, which relegates lengthy exposition and ham-fisted emotional appeals to dialogue trees and strictly cordons off gameplay sequences as places where the only three things you will do are run forward, shoot, and take cover. The script is embarrassing, and there are some amazing shooters out there, so why does Mass Effect 3 even exist? The reason that Hepler works so well as a scapegoat is that her opinions seem to embody what is going wrong with Bioware's games. This extends to treatment of sexuality. Hepler is not gay. She has a husband, and in fact, he also works at Bioware. Her primary interest in writing is romance, and her primary interest when writing romance is homosexuality. This makes most of the romantically capable characters end up as bisexuals, and so far with Bioware, no exploration of the meaning behind any of these things has been made. Two characters have a few conversations, they're bisexual, so there's no problem of rejection, and then an embarrassingly unsexy animation is carried out. All of this happens while they're supposed to be doing important things. That is the groundbreaking presentation of romance and diversity in Mass Effect. Games that have approached similar subjects to a greater degree of success include Fallout New Vegas, Shenmue, and even Grand Theft Auto. Here's my final evidence. While she dislikes the Lord of the Rings books, she does say she loved the movies. In the future, I think I may explain in detail what is wrong with this, if I find that a thousand other nerds haven't already made my points for me. But this, more than anything, shows me that Jennifer is not just a writer, but a fangirl. What happens now? Are we... What did this mean? Now, we both decide what happens next. If you hadn't come to Sandermount that day, I can't imagine where I'd be now. I love you! I probably shouldn't have said that. Did I? I always say the stupidest things. Uh -oh. I love you, Meryl. Actually, I was going to suggest you move in with me. The only thing she is likely to have good taste in is food. An unattractive and reviled symbol of decline. Negligible. A farce. A distraction. 